Bruchem Aboyim. Thank you very much for coming. The topic tonight will be a um, ritual that we call a Shalom Zohar. Uh, what is a Shalom Zohar? The words are translated as to greet a male. If you say hello in Ivrit to someone whose name is David, it would be Shalom David. We call him Shalom Zohar. He doesn't have a name. He doesn't get a name until his bris, until his circumcision. So we just say, we greet the male. So Shalom Zohar is again to greet the male. It is a ritual that we observe on the first Friday night after the birth of a baby boy. The question is, why do we celebrate this ritual? Since there are those opinions that see the gathering as being a consoling of the newborn male rather than a celebration. There are those that connect the Shalom Zohar to the celebration known in the Talmud in Bavakama, 8a, as Yeshua HaBen, that it's the salvation of the son from the dangers of birth. After all, being born is not a simple thing and it's not something we have to take for granted. So it is something that um, we thank HaKadosh Baruch Hu for as a dangerous time. The name is based on a Talmudic dictum in the Gemara Nida 31b, where it states that when a Zohar, a male, is born, Shalom, peace, comes to the world. So therefore the name, Shalom Zohar, again, peace coming through of a, a male being born. The Talmud, the Gemara in Baruch 64a states, Torah scholars bring an abundance of peace, Shalom, to the world. So on the Shabbat, a day of rest and peace, we pray that this Zohar, this, this male child, will bring merit and to bring Shalom into the world. The Gemara Nida again in 64a states that when a baby is in the womb, that there is an angel that teaches it all of the Torah, everything. And as the baby is coming into this world, an angel touches it on his lip, just below his nose, where there is an indentation, right between your nose and your mouth. And the baby then forgets everything that it had learned in the womb. Now, what's the connection between the nose and the mouth? Man is called a medaber, one who speaks. Our ability to speak is what differentiates us from the rest of the animal kingdom. And the Zohar states that Kedusha, holiness, enters the body through a person's nostrils, through his nose. As it says in Bereshit, when God created man, it says that he created man as a lifeless doll, if you will. And then the yipok bi'ap of ruach And then God blew into his nostrils the breath of life. So why would an angel who has just taught this baby all the Torah now cause it to forget everything? Strange. Our rabbis tell us that an angel can only do one mission at a time. So how could this angel now take away that which it had given? And the answer, I believe, is that this is not the same angel. As again, as it says in Bereshit, chapter 4, verse number 7, a Pesach Chatas Rovates, that the Sutton, Satan, waits at the door, which alludes to the womb. So I believe that it is he, the Sutton, who touches the newborn on the lip, so as to take away all that he has gained in the womb. However, we see with Bilaam that the angel that was on the road that killed his talking donkey was called the Sutton. And Rashi there states that it was an angel of mercy. So how can both of these statements be true? So from here we can bring a proof that it is the job of the Sutton, Satan, to test us and help us to achieve our proper place in the world to come. A positive idea. Now the gathering in the home of the newborn is to console him for the Torah that he has forgotten, based on a taz. And since the baby is in mourning for the Torah that he has lost, Lentils and chickpeas are customarily served at a Shalom Zohar, since these are foods that are usually eaten by mourners. So, is the Shalom Zohar a celebration or a, or a gathering of consol consolation? It may well be both at the same time. This can best be illustrated by a story told about Rav Ram Pramishlan, who was the f father of the famous Rav Meir of Pramishlan. Rav Avram of Pramishlam was a chassid, he was a student of the, the Israel of Rizion, the Rizioner. And he had a wealthy chassid that would travel on business. 
and it uh, just so happened that this chassid was going to be traveling through Rishon. So Rav Ram told his chassid that when you are in Rishon, please give my regards to Rabbi Yisrael of Rishon, the Rebbe. And so the rich man went on his journey, business trip, and he wound up in Rishon for Shabbos. And the Rishoner invited him to eat uh, the Friday night and Shabbos meals with the Rebbe. And in the middle of the meal, the Rishoner turned to this businessman and he said, why is your Rebbe such a Balgaiva? Why is he so arrogant? <laughs> and the rich man was really taken back. He didn't know how to answer and a bit embarrassed. And uh, he didn't say anything. And uh, then again at the Shabbos meal during the after davening in the morning, the Rishner again turned to this rich man and said, why is your Rebbe such a Balgaiva? And again, he didn't know what to say. And the same thing happened to Chalashudas. And the uh, rich man was a bit confused and taken back because he really didn't know what was going on. But when he returned back to Pramishlan, he purposely did not go see Rav Avram because he didn't know what to say to him. And finally, he could only stay away so long. And Rav Ram, when he saw him, said, uh, greeted him and he said, did you see the tzaddik? Did you see the Rebbe, Rebbe Yisrael's origin? And he didn't know what to say or what to do. And finally, he said, kind of looking down, he said, uh, I did see him. He said, what did he say? What did he say? He just didn't know how to bring it out. And he finally said, he, he asked me, why are you such a Balgaiva? Why are you so arrogant? And at that, Rav Ram was really taken back by this comment. And he didn't know what it meant. He was broken. And it was Thursday. And he went home and immediately packed uh, some some things and got a wagon driver and told his wife that he was leaving to go to Rishon for Shabbos to see the Rishoner. After all, if the Rishoner thought that he was an arrogant person, a Balgaiva, he had to find out what it was because he didn't understand. And so he gets to Rishon just before Shabbos, but he's so afraid of seeing the Rishoner, he doesn't know what it's about, he decides he's not going to see the Rishoner. He checks into a inn in Rishon. And meanwhile, the Rishoner had heard that uh, Rav Ram of Pramishlan was there for Shabbos. And he told his Hasidim, his students, to go to every inn in, in Rishon and find Rav Ram and bring him to uh, his tish, to his table. Because he wasn't going to make Kiddush. He wasn't going to start his Friday night meal until he came. And so the Hasidim fanned out over the city and sure, sure they found him. And though he wasn't, didn't want to come, they insisted that he come with them. And he went. And while he was sitting at the table, at the uh, Friday night uh, table, the Rishoner turned to Rav Ram and he said to him, Why are you such a Balgaiva? And Rav Ram, you know, if he could have disappeared, he probably would have, but he didn't know what to answer. He just shrunk. And the same thing happened in the morning. The same thing happened at the last meal to Shalashura on, on Shabbat. Finally, after Shabbat, the Rebbe Avram went to the Rishoner and broken. He said to him, Rebbe, why are you asking me about being a Balgaiva? How am I a Balgaiva? What am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? And the Rishoner looked at him and said, I was talking to Elio Anavi, Elijah the prophet. And he told me that he asked, he wanted to learn with you. And you refused. Why are you such a Balgaiva? Why won't you learn with Elio Anavi? And he said, oh, that. He said, because I don't want Elio to give me my Torah. I want to be a Melim the Torah. I want to work hard for my Torah. I want to earn it. And this is how we really need to see the Shalom Zacher. On the one hand, it's a consolation. After all, the baby in the womb had learned all the Torah, but he didn't work for it. It was given to him as a gift, free, nothing, no effort. So when he's born in the Sutton, as a negative, tries to take away the Torah, which he does, it's also a benefit because now he can learn the Torah by putting in the work to do so and earn it, which is much greater, which makes it a celebration that now it's not a gift anymore, but a celebration of something that he learned. And that's how we can see both.
So it may well be that we gather together for the Shalom Zohar on Shabbat, since Shabbat is connected with the word Zohar, as it states in Yisro, chapter 20, verse 8, Zohar et Yom HaShabbat Lekadcho. Remember the day of Shabbat to sanctify it. We pray that this person will study the Torah and remember, Zohar, what he has forgotten. Now the Shalom Zohar is held on Friday night, one reason being since it is more apt for people to be home and available to participate in this gathering, in this celebration. Also, the gematria of the word Shalom Zohar is 603. And I thought that since he has forgotten all the Torah that he had learned in the womb, that somehow, some way, that the gematria would be not 603, which is like nowhere, but 613, which alludes to the number of mitzvot that we have in the Torah. But it's only 603. So I found that in the portion of Pinchat 2512, that Pinchas was promised as his reward for killing Zimri and Cosby. He was given what was called the Brisi Shalom, my covenant of peace. What is interesting is that the Vav in the word Shalom, and that word and only in that place in the Torah, it's cut in half, making the Vav both a Vav and a Yud. And a Yud has a numerical value of 10, that giving the world word Shalom a extra 10 uh, numbers, and so they, now the gematria, instead of being 376, becomes 386. So the vav is cut in half because until the coming of Mashiach, who will herald in the, the uh, who, who will herald in the coming of Mashiach? Eliyahu Navi, Elijah the prophet. So until then, all we have is an incomplete piece, and that's why the vav is cut. So we have the word bris, circumcision, and then a vav that is cut in half alluding to the act of circumcision when we cut off the foreskin from the male member. We are told in the Talmud that Eliyahu is present at all circumcisions. In fact, we set aside a seat for him, which we call Kisi Eliyahu, the seat of Eliyahu, and we place the baby on that seat. And in addition, the Zohar states that Pinchas, who Eliyahu, that Pinchas is Bo Eliyahu, that he's reincarnated as Eliyahu, and that Pinchas really and Eliyar are the same person. So since the newborn's peace has been disrupted by the loss of his Torah, his Shalom has been cut. And now the gematri of the word Shalom Zohar is not 603, but it is with that extra Yud, 613, which are the numbers of the mitzvot in the Torah. Another interesting gematri is that the name Eliyahu has a gematri of 52, which is the same gamachi as the word ben, a son, which again, Elio, being present at the circumcision of a boy. May we merit that we attain a true and complete peace through Elio heralding in the coming of Mashiach Sekenu quickly and in our time. I want to thank you very much for coming. God bless, be well, Shabbat Shalom.